This is uh, camera 57. This is at uh, CS6. Uh, again, 1,200 feet uh, from the pad or so. And we're looking at the bottom half uh, of the vehicle. As I mentioned earlier, the, the camera is mounted on a tracker. The KTM tracker has uh, four or five different cameras on there. And this is the lower half um, uh, film camera looking at the bottom of the vehicle. And you can see the paper covers come off the uh, RCS engines. Those are Tyvek covers, just same same kind of material that you put on your house when uh, building it. And uh, those covers are there in case they get a squall or a, a little storm while the shuttle's out on the pad. Not uncommon in Florida, and we can't afford to have water inside those engines, so we put those paper covers on there, and they have these little parafoils that inflate, sort of tear the cover off. They're just uh, adhered uh, with an adhesive of some kind. So the, you'll see a lot of that white paper coming off during these launch shots. Beautiful shot looking up the tail end of the uh, the stack. And uh, possibly on the uh, deleted features or the deleted scenes on this disc, uh, we're going to try to uh, edit a uh, piece together showing this, the camera pair, the views from the camera pair is pieced together. And it should look pretty nice to so look at that on our our uh, deleted scenes uh, feature on the disc. This is uh, Echo 225. As you can see, it's already uh, in flight. It's a really interesting view. It's a medium range uh, tracking camera. Um, the, the mount and the camera are located at uh, UCS-4, which is about 2.4 miles uh, north of the pad. One of the reasons I selected this shot uh, to be included on the DVD is because um, I thought it was really striking and really beautiful how in their roll program as they went into their roll, the, the sun sort of peaks over like it does here and, and you can see the name pop out and uh, slowly the whole orbiter becomes lit with the, uh, with the evening sun. And uh, the textures are fantastic here. You can see the thermal blankets, you can see some of the thermal uh, exposure to the thermal blankets, you see some variation in color, and you can see the tiles literally make out the uh, the boundaries of the tiles there. So uh, really a wonderful uh, piece of footage and, and uh, a remarkable contribution to the DVD from a photography standpoint. The lens that's on the camera is an 150-inch uh, Brashear lens. It's a cat-eye dioptic uh, lens, uh, so it's got a mirror surface and it's about 4,000 millimeters uh, focal length uh, if you converted the, the inches to millimeters. Just to give a perspective, Matt, the weight of this lens is about 250 pounds, just the lens itself. It's a huge lens and a really unbelievable piece of optics. You can really see a lot of nice textures on this shot too, uh, on, the, on the booster. If you look at the, uh, the forward part of the booster, you can see the access panels and um, that big line coming off of the external tank, that's actually the uh, oxygen feed line on the external tank. That's where that 280 gallons a second of liquid oxygen are uh, flowing through to the main engines. That feed line is about 17 inches in diameter, so it's a pretty beefy uh, system. And I think another thing to point out here is that um, this uh, camera mount is uh, manually tracked. So the operator is looking through a bore sight at the camera site, launch vibrations going on all around uh, uh, him or her and keeping uh, that uh, vehicle uh, dead center in the frame. And it's uh, quite an amazing um, uh, feat to be able to do that so quite so accurately. Yeah, they, they, uh, they've they done a great job of keeping on target every step of the way. Now they're getting a little further away, obviously, and you can see uh, sort of the glow of those engines starting to come up against the bottom part of the, uh, the stack there, as they call it, and um, lets you know that something's going on at the back end of that vehicle. So the next series of uh, shots we're going to see is the uh, views from the HD cameras. And um, in this particular view, this is uh, from STS-114, Return to Flight. So this was uh, in July 26th of uh, 2005. And uh, we're about, one, about two miles from the pad, just south of uh, pad 39B here. And the camera is, uh, is cocked at a uh, 45 degree angle to enable maximum use of the uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio that uh, is uh, available with the uh, HD TV cameras. Now it's important our viewers take a good look into the uh, left window there. You can actually see Eileen Collins who commanded this mission. You can see her suit inside the window. Um, absolutely amazing. Uh, and this is a first, right? This is a first 
in the program, we started using high definition video after Columbia, okay. and uh, that was um, uh, one of the first times we saw this level of detail in photography. That that is correct. So this particular uh, camera view is EHV 225. This was recorded on STS 117. It was in June 2006. And um, the camera is uh, running at 60 frames a second, as all the HDTV cameras uh, do. Um, the, the orientation of the camera is, uh, is cocked at 45 degrees to make maximum use of the aspect ratio of the 16 by 9 frame um, to get as much of the vehicle, um, space shuttle vehicle, in the frame as possible. This particular shot I chose because um, it's well exposed and, and it shows a beautiful uh, sequence in the roll program, but you also get this really nice uh, vapor phenomenon as the vehicle accelerates uh, to higher speeds. And this is not always visible to the, uh, for every launch, is a, it's a consequence of atmospheric conditions, uh, dew point, humidity, etc. So um, I thought it was kind of a nice, uh, nice touch to this particular image. This is the only long-range camera that made the final cut, and Kevin will give you the details about that in a moment, but I want you to look at the bottom of the tank there. Uh, as you saw, it just sort of uh, became engulfed in flames, and um, you should know that this is a, a, a normal phenomenon in, in a shuttle launch. But what's effectively occurring here is the exhaust gases coming out of the S SRBs and the um, SSMEs are sort of expanding into the higher vacuum as they head into space and the radiant heat from the expanded plumes becomes high enough to ignite some volatile gases that are caught up in this aerodynamic dead zone, so to speak, at the rear of the tank for a couple of moments during flight. But this is an amazing shot, Kevin, because it's from so far away, so why don't you explain uh, what we're looking at here? Yeah, Matt, the uh, camera here is located at a place called Apollo Beach. It's within uh, Cape Canaveral National Seashore, and the camera mount is about 20 miles north of the pad, so it's quite a distance away. This is a uh, Brashear 150 inch uh, lens, again about uh, 4,000 millimeters. Uh, so quite a, quite a distance and the uh, tracker, is, as we mentioned earlier, is manually um, operated. So it's an operator looking through a, uh, a scope and uh, using a trackball to keep the, uh, the vehicle in the field of view. It's, yeah. um, it's also difficult for the operator, because of the distance, to see the vehicle at launch to sight the pad. Yeah, it's so just a, he has a to, tiny point she, of light, right? So. So he or she grabs it on the fly, and it's it's yeah. quite a quite a skill level that's uh, that needs to be developed in order to do that. Well, and of course we watched our solid rocket boosters separate, um, which is uh, sort of at the tail end of what we can see with with all of the tracking cameras. And um, there you see our boosters coming off, and uh, they they separated about 29 miles in altitude, about two minutes into flight, and they are recovered by divers out in the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, although they appear to be falling back here, they're actually uh, traveling another 15 miles or so up, just tumbling on their own forward momentum before they peak and then come back down in the Atlantic about 150 miles out where the diving tanks pick them up and bring them back for refurbishment. So this sort of brings us to the end of our production. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed the commentary. Kevin and I have enjoyed uh, doing it today for you. and. Uh, as the boosters sort of fade out and the, the external tank and the orbiter continue on their way to orbit, we want to dedicate this movie to uh, all of the men and women over the 30 years of the program or so that have uh, committed themselves to capturing all of these fine images. It's uh, amazing work, uh, it takes a lot of commitment and it's extraordinarily tough to do so and uh, our hats off to them. So Kevin, thanks for doing this with me. Thank you. Um, it's been a, a wonderful endeavor, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see each other again on the next uh, space program. So, uh, signing off. <laughs>